Good morning. I believe you are fine today. I welcome you to today's class. In our previous class, we discussed on livestock management. And we defined livestock management as a rearing of animals in a farm profitably through good selection, breeding, housing, adequate feeding, and health care. We limit our discussion on the management of poultry birds and goats. We discuss their management system, their management systems, the extensive system, the semi intensive system, and the intensive system. We discuss on the extensive system whereby the animals are allowed to roam about and feed by themselves. And we discuss on semi intensive system where the animals are allowed to roam about but within the farm and houses are provided for them. And also in the intensive system, we discuss that the animals are restricted. They are kept in their house, they are confined in the house and feet water and um, egg care be given to them in their house. So for uh, today's class with 10, which is the final lesson for this 10, we'll continue our discussion on livestock management and we'll look at the management of cattle and pigs. Made of cattle and pigs. Now before we move on, Let's see our learning objectives. So, best of management continue is our topic for week 10 final class. The learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the students should be able to discuss the rearing of cattle and pigs under the following headings. A, I'll say, B, feeding, C, and G, and D, sanitation. Sanitation. Now, let's see the cattle. Cattle belongs to the group of animals known as bovidae. They are ruminants. I believe you remember what ruminants animals have. They are animals that have four stomach compartments. So cattle, they are ruminants with hollow horns and hooves, having an even number of toes. They have horns and they have hooves on their legs and they have an even number of toes. Now let's see the breeds of cattle. We have three main breeds of cattle. The beef cattle. They are cattle with the ability of producing meat. They are only red for meat production. And the example is uh, the examples are we have the Kuri, Red Bororo, we have the Rahachi, ETC, among others. Mm -hmm. Then number two, we have the dairy cattle. These are red mainly for meat production. They are cattle that are red for meat production. They are capable of producing milk. Examples are White Fulani, Kerry, Dexters, among others. And number three, we have the Dua Purpose Katsu. These Katsu, they are capable of producing both meat and milk. They are capable of producing both milk and meat. And the examples are Azawa, Muturu, Wadara, among others. It's a so these are the three main breeds of cattle. The beef cattle, the dairy cattle, and the dual purpose cattle. The beef cattle are mainly red for their meat. The dairy cattle, they are mainly red for producing milk. And the dual purpose cattle, they are red for producing milk and meat. So they can both produce milk and meat. I believe you are following me. Now, let's see the cattle management system. There are three main management systems in cattle. We have the extensive or free range system, 
we have the semi-intensive system and we have the intensive system. Now, under the extensive or semi or free range system, under the extensive or free range system, here the cattle are allowed to roam about, to graze about, to move about. They are allowed, they, 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 will, they will find food by themselves, they will fend for themselves. And under semi intensive system, the cattle are allowed to roam about also, but within the farm, within the farm, and houses are provided for them to rest or to sleep at night. And also, we have the intensive system. Here, the cattle pen or store are provided, and the cattle are restricted. They are not allowed to roam about. They are restricted in their house and feet will be provided for them. And also feet, water, and also health care will be given to them. In the other system also, health care will be given to the cattle. Now, let me give you the picture of an extensive system. This is an extensive system of very cattle. See the cattle, they are grazing on the grasses. They are the they roam about the grass on the grasses all by themselves, they fend for themselves, they look for grasses for by themselves to feed on. Also, this is a semi-intensive system. So the cattle feed on the grasses, they are allowed to move out from their house just within the four walls of the farm. So they are allowed to move about the forward of the farm to feed and also return back to the house. And here we have the semi-intensive system. You can see this is the cattle house, the pen. They are here. Feed are provided for them. Health care will be provided also and water will be provided for them. So they are not allowed to roam about. They are not allowed to go anywhere. Just they are inside their house and will be taken care of here and water will be given to them as you can see as they have here. Now let's continue. The housing. How the house of cattle, the pen of store, how can be constructed is what we are about to discuss. Open shed with thatched roof made of strong timber posts and railings is provided as housing for cattle in some areas. So in some areas, the open shed with thatch room, that is shrubs, will be made with their house. And timber post railings are used as their house in certain areas, area, areas, especially in the village. This kind of housing system is used. But in modern animal husbandry, the, the, their house can be, can be built with cement. And the floor should be made of concrete to enhance easy cleaning. Then the roof should be constructed with galvanized roofing sheets. This normal roofing sheets for durability. A roofing sheet that will last long, that can withstand both sun and rain for a very long time, that is durable. So this is the house that can be made in modern animal husbandry. Now let's see feeding. Cattle being ruminants. Ruminants animal, animals that have four stomach compartments. You can see their mode of digestion is, is unlike the non-ruminant animals. So cattle being ruminants, they feed mainly on roughages, and roughages are legumes and grasses. Now they feed mainly on roughages because of the stomach, of the nature of their stomach. So also cattle can be fed on concentrate feeds. It can be fed on concentrate feeds as a mixture of various grains. Feeds that have been prepared under hygienic condition in the food industry. So they can be, they can be fed on concentrate feeds, grains and other artificial minerals and vitamins. Together, branded together, and they are being packed in a bag. It can be used to feed the cattle. So, 
This mushroom feeds provide the required nutrients in their diet. The kosher feed feeds they are just like um, a, a man-made feed, prepared in various minerals and vitamins proportion together, branded together, prepared in the food industry under hygienic condition to be fed with the cattle. So cattle can feed on roughages on their own grasses and their gyms on the, on, the, on the farm around, just like um, the, the, the full anise that, that, that move their cattle around the nomadic farmers, the full anise, they move their cattle around. So those cattle feed on grasses and their gyms. And also cattle can be fed on concentrate feeds. Let's move on. Let's see the health care and sanitation. Number one, the houses should be cleaned regularly. And care for the cattle by cleaning their house regularly. So the houses should be cleaned regularly. Regular in summer, their houses should be washed, disinfected, and cleaned. Also, Fascination should be given to the cattle against diseases. Regular fascination should be given to the cattle. Regular fascine, rather. Fascine should be given to the cattle. Fascination should be carried out regularly. So fascine should be given to the cattle. Fascines and drugs should be given to the cattle regularly to fight against diseases. Number three, any sick animal should be isolated and treated urgently. Any sick animals should be, any sick animal should be isolated from others, should be separated from others so that the disease would not spread to others. So any sick animal, should be isolated, should be separated and treated urgently. Also, cattle should be dewormed regularly to kill the endoparasite, that is the internal parasites. The cattle should be dewormed regularly to kill internal parasites. Then the pens, their feeding equipment and watering equipment should be done regularly. That is, they should be cleaned, should be cleaned, be cleaned daily. So the cleaning of the pens, watching and feeding equipment should be done daily. That is, their pen should be cleaned daily. Their watching and feeding equipment should be cleaned daily to avoid contamination. So these are the measures that can be taken so that the cattle can be in an healthy disposal. Health care and sanitation of the cattle. But one, the houses should be cleaned regularly, as is discussed. Regular fascination should be carried out against diseases. The cattle should be given vaccines and drugs so that to fight against diseases. Number three, also sick animals should be isolated and treated. Sick animals should be isolated and treated. Cattle should be dewormed regularly to kill internal parasites, the endoparasites that can affect the growth and development of the cattle should be killed by deworming the cattle. Also, the pens, the watering equipment, and the feeding equipment should be cleaned daily. They should be washed daily. They should be cleaned daily to avoid contamination. So these are the health care and sanitation procedure or measures that can be taken by the farmers. The common diseases of cattle. These are the diseases that affect the cattle. But one, foot and mouth disease. But two, rinderpest disease. 
Number three, anthrax. Number four, trypanosomiasis. Number five, tuberculosis. We have water fever, among others. Among others, we have many of them among others. So, vaccines, drugs can be given to the cattle for these diseases. Vaccines can be given to the cattle to prevent them from having these diseases. And drugs can be given to the cattle to treat the cattle, to treat any animal, any of the cattle that is infected with any of these diseases. Now let's move to the pig. The pig is another animal that we, we discussed. Pigs are non-ruminant animals. They are monogastric animals. They are non-ruminant animals. That is, they have only one stomach. And they belong to the family today. They belong to the family today. Let's see the breeds of pigs. They have the large white, the large black, West African dwarf pig, Poland, China, Chester Whites, American Night Race, Palm Woods, we have Durok Jesse, among others. These are just few breeds of pig, among others. The system of rearing pigs. This system is common to all livestock. We have the extensive system, semi-intensive system, and we have the intensive system. The intensive system, also known as the free ring system, here the pigs are allowed to roam about, to feed on their own. Owls may be provided for them. In semi-intensive system, they are allowed just to feed within the four walls of the farm. Within the four walls of the farm and houses are provided for them to sleep at night. Intensive system. They will be restricted. They will not be allowed to move out. They will be inside the pen and feed together with water and also healthcare services provided for them. So these are the three main systems of rearing pigs. This is the extensive and intensive pig system. Now this is the extensive. You can see the pig, without the piglets, they are allowed to roam about and feed on their own, allows the farm to fend for himself. While this is intensive, the pigs they are provided with house, the pen, and they are restricted from moving out. From moving out, they are restricted from moving out. Feed and water will be given to them. Yeah. Now let's see the semi-intensive. The semi-intensive. You can see this pen. This one's more pen. There's one year, there's one year, we have one year, various. So this is the pig house. This is their houses that are built here. So you can see the pig, they are moving in the four wall of the, of the farm, their house. They move about, they're allowed to roam about and find something to eat and later go back to the house. Later go back to the house to sleep or rest. So this is a semi-intensive system. I believe you understand this and you're following the class. Now let's see the housing system. How the house of pig should be constructed. 
Big houses are sheds which provide shelter against ash weather. Big houses are sheds that provide shelter against ash weather, such as rain, sunlight, when the weather is ash, it can or unfavorable for them. The house is where they should lay their eggs. It should be constructed along the direction of the wind, and this is done for good ventilation. And also, the big house should be far from residential areas. It should be far from where human being lives because of odor and possibly to prevent transmission of disease or charm. The wall should be low and made with bricks for easy ventilation too, for aeration. The walls should be low and made with brick stones or concrete cement. So brick stones or concrete cement can be used to make the wall in the construction of the big house. Then the floor should be hard but easy to clean. The floor should be hard and easy to clean. The roof should be made of either asbestos, carbonized iron or aluminum sheets. So as asbestos can be used to make the roof of the pig pen. Galvanized iron can be used also, or aluminum sheets can also be used. So this is the procedure for the, this is the measure for the construction of the pig house. house. Now let's see the feeding. Feeding. Pigs should be, pigs feed should be balanced in nutrients. The feed should be balanced in nutrients. That is, the pig should contain all nutrients required for the proper growth and development, and also production of the pig. Pigs being omnivorous animals, that is, they can feed both on grasses and what and flesh. So, pig, be, pig being omnivorous animals can feed on chicken on kitchen waste rather on kitchen waste. So they can feed on chicken or on kitchen waste, grasses and dry waste, and dry waste. You can feed on kitchen waste. This leftover food from our kitchen can be used to feed pigs. Pigs can feed on grasses and also dry waste. Dry waste such as dried cassava peels or dry uh, yam peels. So they can be used to feed pigs. Now let's move on. The hygiene and sanitation. The routine measures that can be adopted for pigs' health care and sanitation include number one, the pig pens and stall should be washed and cleaned daily. The pig pens and stall should be washed and cleaned daily. Very, very essential to eliminate germs and diseases. So the, the, the to, to eliminate germs that can cause disease. So the pig pen should be and store should be washed and cleaned daily. But two, sick animals should be isolated and treated urgently. So any sick animal should be isolated, be separated from others so that they won't infect others and they should be treated urgently. A dead animal should be removed and buried. A dead animal should not be left with other animals not be left decaying. This can affect other animals. So, other animals. So, dead animals should be removed immediately and buried urgently. Also, pigs also should be dewormed on a regular basis to eliminate the internal parasites that can affect their growth and development. So, the pig should be dewormed regularly. And also, vaccines should be administered at the appropriate time to prevent the outbreak of diseases. So vaccine should be administered to the pigs to prevent them having diseases. Not them having diseases. I believe we've been able to understand the class. Now let's see the common diseases of pigs. The common diseases of pigs. Now we have number one, we have brucellosis. Anthrax, Ox cholera, swine, 
swine dysentery, transmissible gastroenteritis, uro pneumonia, and we have buffing matitis, among others. Among others. So these are the diseases that can affect pigs. So any infected pigs can be given drug for treatment. Any infected pigs with any of these diseases can be given drugs for treatment and also vaccine can be administered to the drugs to prevent them from having any of these diseases, to prevent them from being infected from any of these diseases. Now, before we conclude the class, let's see a quick summary of what we have discussed today. We discussed on the rearing of cattle and pigs, and we've seen the breeds of cattle, the, the beef cattle, the milk cattle, the, the dairy cattle rather, the dairy cattle and the dual purpose cattle. And we discussed that the beef cattle they are red for the production of meat, the dairy cattle they are red for the production of milk. And the dual purpose cattle are cattle that can produce both milk and meat. Discuss the system of rearing cattle, the extensive, the semi-intensive, and the intensive. Extensive whereby the cattle will be allowed to grow about and fend for itself. Also, we discuss the semi-intensive. The cattle, will be, the cattle will be allowed to grow within the four walls of the farm and houses are provided for them. And also we discuss the intensive, where the cattle are confined in their house, will not be allowed to roam about and water and feed will be given to them. This is also applicable to the system of rearing pigs also the common disease of pigs and the health care and sanitation of these livestock with cattle and pigs. The health care and sanitation are common to both. Their pen should be washed daily. Their feeding and watering equipment should be washed daily as well. Fascination should be administered to them. Drugs should be given to any infected animal and also dead animal should be buried and any sick animal should be isolated and treated urgently. I believe you've enjoyed the class and with this we have come to the end of the class. Thank you. I believe you understand the lesson. Please I want you to go back to your to your notes. I want you to go back to your notes and I want you to I want you to move back to your notes, read your notes, test with essential agriculture, ensure that you get more information about the topic so that you can understand the topic better. Thank you and continue to stay safe. Bye.